Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. We are learning the chapter Ecosystem. We discuss different features of ecosystem, biotic as well as abiotic. And also we started with the functions of ecosystem. The first one productivity we discuss. We will discuss the rest of the functions in this video. We will start with decomposition. Decomposition is a function of an ecosystem. Decomposition is done by smaller or a micro, smaller organisms and a microbes. During decomposition, the organic substances are broken down into simple inorganic substances like carbon dioxide, water and nutrients with the help of microorganisms. What is the raw material for this decomposition? It is called a detritus. Detritus means the fallen leaves, then the twigs or the flowers, the dead animal body or uh, dead plants and also the excreta of animals, everything that is falling on the uh, so, uh, soil which are biodegradable, they are actually called the detritus. So you know if you imagine a forest floor, you know a large amount of detritus will be there. So what is the, uh, what is the raw material for decomposition? Detritus. So there should be organisms to break down this into smaller particles because microorganisms usually use their enzymes to digest these particles. But if the particles are so big, can the enzyme act on it? Because the secretion is in very small quantities. So first these large substances should be broken down into smaller particles. So this is done by a set of organisms called the detritivores. So detritivores are the organisms which break detritus into smaller particles. So suppose there is a leaf. After a few days you can see that leaf is uh, uh, becoming smaller particles. So this is done by organisms called detritivores. What are detritivores? Examples earthworm, mites, millipedes and all. Now uh, if you look at the different stages of our uh, decomposition, it has got five stages which we can remember using a mnemonics that is father likes the cat hiding in the mine. Father has starts with F, F for fragmentation, L for leaching, cat for catabolism, H for humification, mine for mineralization. Once again, fragmentation, leaching, catabolism, humification and mineralization. Now we will discuss these steps one by one. First is fragmentation. As the name indicates, making larger substances into simple fragments. Here, who is doing that? Detritivores. Detritivores will act on the detritus fallen on the soil and make them into smaller particles so that the further enzymatic action will be easy. During that time, when this process is happening that time itself, while this breaking down is happening, some uh, nutrients or inorganic substances will be water soluble. Okay, so these water soluble inorganic substance will go down to the soil means it will percolate down to the soil and will get deposited as salts in the soil which is late unavailable to us. Okay, so that is becoming the salt sedimentation. Now here one thing you have to remember here is it is inorganic nutrients going down. So you have to remember between organic and inorganic. Suppose if it is carbohydrate, it has got carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Carbohydrate is an organic substance whereas carbon dioxide or water which is having the same elements carbon, hydrogen or oxygen that is becoming inorganic. So inorganic means outside the living system or uh, non-living whereas uh, if it is a part of living system it is organic. That is the simplest way to understand it. So here only inorganic nutrients will get precipitated and become unavailable salts. Then the third step is called a catabolism. As the name indicates, catabolic process means what? Breaking down process, right? So here who will break down? The microorganisms. Bacteria and fungi, they will secrete their enzyme into these uh, the broken down detritus. As a result, that will be uh, digested, right? So here, do you know why these bacteria and fungi are secreting their enzymes? These microorganisms, they have extracellular digestion. They are called saprotrophs. They cannot ingest the food and digest. Rather, they digest the food outside and take the nutrients. So, they will secrete their enzymes onto the uh, food particles and they digest it. Only nutrients will be absorbed. So, that process actually useful to us called a decomposition, right? So, that is one of the steps that is called a catabolism where the detritus is broken down by the enzymes secreted by bacteria and fungi which are the main decomposers and simple inorganic substances are formed. So complex substances will be broken down into simple inorganic substances. Okay. So three steps we learn. First step, 
Detritus is broken down into smaller particles called a fragmentation that is done by detritivores. During that time, some inorganic insol water soluble substances will go down and get sedimented that is called a, uh, um, leaching and third is catabolism where uh, the rest of the uh, particles are uh, broken down by these um, organisms into inorganic substances and uh, this process is called a catabolism. It is done with the help of enzymes. These three sub, uh, uh, stages are actually happening simultaneously. Now we saw the first three st uh, stages like fragmentation, uh, uh, leaching and uh, uh, catabolism. These three steps are happening simultaneously and it is happening on the detritus, right? So first detritus was broken down into fragments. From that the water soluble nutrients got precipitated and the rest of the inorganic uh, uh, substances were released. Now what is left? Some uh, substances are still left which will be on the soil. So what is happening in the soil as part of decomposition are the next two steps that is humification and the mineralization. So once the fragmentation, leaching and catabolism is over, we have some litter means small small fragments from which all the inorganic substances already released. Now the other complex organic substances are there. It is forming a something called a humus. So humus means uh, it is a dark color covering over the soil. You know you have learned the soil profile in smaller classes. The top layer is humus and we know the more the humus the better the fertility of the soil. right? So the humus is actually a dark color substance because it consists of all the broken down parts or which are undergoing decomposition. Then it is amorphous. Amorphous means there is no definite shape. It is a shapeless uh, substance. It is resistant to microbial actions means uh, microbial action means what these microbes are uh, basically breaking them down right but it is highly resistant to these activities so as a result the process becomes very slow and uh, decomposition is a uh, slow in this case and uh, it is colloidal in nature because of its colloidal property it acts as a reservoir of nutrients so these are the characteristics of a humus humus is dark amorphous and uh, highly resistant to microbial action so slow decomposition occur and being colloidal in nature it is a good reservoir of all the nutrients but can the microbes uh, quietly without uh, decomposing it though it is slow uh, decomposition happening no but over a period of time our microbes will continue their action and completely the humus will break down into inorganic nutrients so whatever was a part of a living thing after falling onto the soil now completely depleted and became a part of the soil. So that is the final step mineralization. Decomposition is happening in the environment. So there are different factors affecting decomposition. The main two factors are one the uh, chemical nature of the detritus means which substance to be decomposed what is its nature is very important. Second what is the climatic factor existing in that particular region. So if the chemical nature if we see you know that some cells of the plant body for example the dead cells like a xylem or sclerenchyma cells they all have or bark of the tree they all have thick coating of uh, materials like a uh, lignin may be there or cutin, uh, chitin may be there. Uh, chitin is present in the fungal cell wall or insects uh, exoskeleton. So if it is made up of chitin or if it is lignin uh, rich part of the plant then the decomposition becomes slow. It takes more time because they are complex polysaccharides. So it takes more time to decompose them. But at the same time, if it is water soluble uh, substances or nitrogen uh, containing substances, then the decomposition becomes faster. You know, suppose you are just uh, throwing a fruit, piece of a fruit or a fruit peel and a piece of wood uh, at the same time, same place. You know that the fruit will disappear in a few weeks, but the wood will stay there for more period because the decomposition is slower there. Okay, so that's the difference. The same way climatic factors. Climatic factors, the main thing here is the decomposers are mainly aerobic bacteria and fungi. So they need lot of oxygen for this process. So an aerobic environment is necessary. Apart from that, the two main factors are temperature and the soil moisture. Fungus always prefers the warm and humid condition. The temperature should be high at the same time moisture also should be available. So if the condition is warm and moist then naturally the decomposition rate also will be high. 
But at the same time, if the temperature is very low, it will uh, slow down the enzymatic activities we know, right? And also if it is anaerobiosis, these organisms are not getting enough oxygen, then that will lead to the buildup of organic material, that so the depletion becomes slower. Because we, our idea of decomposition is to break down this organic substances into simple inorganic substances in the environment. So these factors are very important, you have to remember. Hope you understood all the concepts well. If so, like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion. Thank you for watching.